On today's show, Volkswagen AG follows Tesla at its power day, announcing a new battery, massive investment in gigafactories across Europe, and much more. Hindenburg Research's latest report causes the SEC to examine Lordstown Motors, and BMW showcases the i4 electric sedan, but doesn't give us much in the way of details about it. These stories and more, coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks so much for joining me. Volkswagen held its first ever Power Day this week, at which the company laid out its plans for the future of its many brands, which include Volkswagen Cars, Porsche, Audi, Skoda, Seat, Scania, and many more. The entire presentation, two hours long, covered a lot. We heard about new cell chemistries and a single uniform battery pack design that VDub says will dramatically lower costs. We heard about the company's plans to ready solid state batteries for commercial use. And we heard how Volkswagen AG will build 240 gigawatt hours of factories across Europe by the end of this decade. This presentation not only caused Volkswagen's share price to spike to its highest for more than 12 years, but it also proved how serious the company is about following Tesla to an EV future. EV Sales Blog has just published the latest data for electric vehicle sales in China for the month of February. And it shows that even though February is traditionally a slow month, Chinese e fail sales are rocketing upwards. According to official sales estimates, 104,000 new passenger plug-in cars were sold in China last month, up 600% year-on-year from 2020. Spearheading the growth is the highly popular and incredibly affordable Wuling Hongguan Mini EV and the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y. 20,167 Hongguan Mini EVs were sold in February, while Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y amassed a combined total of 18,318 cars. If that doesn't show how diverse the EV market is in the PRC, I really don't know what will. Hindenburg Research, the short seller that brought Nikola Motor to its knees last year, has published another in-depth analysis of a green vehicle startup, this time Lordstown Motors. The report, as scathing as the one on Nikola, alleges that Lordstown has consistently misrepresented the number of orders it has for its endurance pickup, paid a consulting firm to make pre-reservations in order to entice investors to buy in, and says the endurance is nowhere near ready for market. Lordstown CEO Steve Burns, who the report also makes some serious allegations against, confirmed this week that the SEC is now investigating the company after the report was published. It's not exactly clear on what's being focused on, but the unloading of $28 million of stock by execs at Lordstown is likely right up there. If you were someone who wanted to have a grid-tied storage system for your existing photovoltaic solar array, or just wanted to have a battery backup system for your home, Tesla would happily sell you one or more of its Powerwalls. But this week, Tesla stopped taking Powerwall orders in the US from customers who weren't also buying solar panels from the company. It suggests that demand is far outstripping supply, and Tesla is eager to get its Powerwall working alongside other Tesla products. Since Powerwall launched, there are now a number of equally competent battery storage systems also available from rival firms. As a follow-up to the Volkswagen AG Power Day this week, Audi's CEO has confirmed that the luxury brand has ceased all internal combustion engine development. With the Euro 7 emission standards proving particularly difficult to meet with traditional internal combustion engine tech, the brand has ultimately made a decision to cut its losses and put all of its attention into greener alternatives. It's not clear when the last internal combustion engine vehicle will be made by Audi, but Euro 7 standards are due to come into force in 2025. This means no more brand new vehicles with pre-Euro 7 engines after that point although I believe it can still sell existing engines for a little while. Either way, this is just another indication of how serious Volkswagen's group is now becoming 
about making EVs. We often cover charging networks on this channel, and our discussion usually revolves around location, availability, cost, and reliability. But a new study from the Research Institute for Disabled Consumers in the UK has found that two-thirds of disabled drivers fear that they would find electric car charging either difficult or very difficult to use in its current form. At the top of the list of concerns were the weight of DC quick charge cables and plugs and the availability of accessible spaces between car and charging station. Worries about trip hazards and barriers around charging stations also scored highly on the list of concerns. This is a super important and unrepresented issue to cover. There isn't even any B-roll available appropriate to this topic. But rather than speak for a community that we cannot represent, we'd like disabled EV drivers to help us. So leave us a comment below if you'd like to help us make that video a reality. BMW held its annual conference this week and it used it to highlight its future roadmap for zero emission vehicles. Stopping short of fully committing to an electric future, the brand did comment that it would spend significant investments in EV production and batteries, and it was far less detailed than Volkswagen AG's presentation. However, it did showcase the new 2022 BMW i4 electric sedan for the first time. It was showcased on screen and on stage, but we didn't get a whole lot of information about the car's specs, save for an estimated 300 mile, 482 kilometer EPA range and a sub four second sprint time. We are told to expect more specs, pricing and a peek inside in the very near future. Electric truck startup Bollinger Motors has been unusually quiet these past few months, but this week revealed official pricing and specifications for its Class 3 B2 Chassis E and Chassis E Cab trucks. Based on the B2 electric pickup, they feature the same underpinning chassis technology and drivetrain, but allow third-party coach builders an electrified platform that they can then build on top of. Prices will start at $55,000 for the rear-wheel drive chassis E and go all the way up to $100,000 for the all-wheel drive chassis cab. The rear-wheel drive variant will be available with a single or dually configuration. Rivian has confirmed initial details of its long-awaited Rivian Adventure network. While the Rivian R1T and R1S use CCS as its charging standard of choice, meaning that Rivian owners can use any CCS charge station, Rivian's network is only going to be compatible with Rivian vehicles. With 3,500 rapid charging stations spread across 600 geographic sites by the end of 2023, Rivian's charging station map today looks a little like an early Tesla supercharger map. But rather than Tesla's goal of providing charging along major corridors, Rivian will also offer charging at locations that are frequented or visited by off-road adventure fans. This is why there are a significant number of planned charging stations spread out in the Rocky Mountains and also along the Appalachian mountain range. Sadly, while being CCS, Rivian has confirmed that it will only be giving access to Rivian owners. And finally, Canadian microcar specialist Electra Mechanica has officially chosen Mesa, Arizona as home for a new US production facility where it will make US market solo EVs. We've been waiting to hear which facility Electra Mechanica had ultimately chosen at its US base of operations for some time. But I've also been waiting a really long time to get behind the wheel of the Solo EV. I mean, we last saw one in the flesh back in 2018. Luckily for us though, it just so happens that we're going to get a little quick drive around the block this weekend. So keep your eyes peeled for our review and let me know below what you'd like me to try and figure out in the 20 or so minutes that we've been given with the car. As someone who loves microcars, frankly, I've owned way too many in my time, I can't wait, but this isn't about me. It's about what you want us to find out. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.